In this video, we'll introduce field operators, which are a powerful tool to control the behavior of other operators. We'll be building on topics introduced earlier in this series, so I recommend watching the previous videos before this one. We're starting with a basic render setup that was introduced in previous videos. First, we'll set up an SDF. Open the palette using the Alt-R shortcut and create a cylinder SDF. And connect that to the first input on the renderer. And we're going to keep the default settings here of the Y axis and this radius of 0 0.5 height of 1. On the camera, set the FOV angle to 45 and the position to 0, 3, 5. On its own, the cylinder SDF has the same radius anywhere along its length. When the renderer asks for the closest surface to a point here, it does its calculation using the radius from its parameter of 0.5. When asked about another point further down, it uses the same setting of 0.5. Open the palette again and create an axis distance field. And connect that to the first input, the radius field input on the cylinder SDF. We're going to keep the default setting of the y axis in the center of 0 for now. Now, fields are operators that produce numeric answers to questions. There are two types of answers, floats, which are single numbers, and vectors, which are groups of four numbers. In the case of axis distance field, it produces a single value, which is the distance from a center point along one axis. Operators can use fields in lots of different ways. In our setup here, the cylinder SDF is using this axis distance field to decide what the radius should be. When the renderer asks the cylinder about a point here, the cylinder asks its radius input what the radius should be for that point. The axis distance field then looks at the position that it's being asked about and calculates the distance from that center point along the y-axis. The cylinder then uses that radius when doing its calculation for the surface distance. When the renderer asks about a different point further down, the cylinder then asks the axis distance field for its value, which ends up being a smaller one because it's closer to the center. And so it uses a smaller radius when it's doing its calculation. Try switching the axis to X. and then setting the center to a negative value like this. When the renderer asks for the distance to the surface on the left side here, the axis distance field will use the distance along the x-axis to the center point, produce this smaller value. And so when the cylinder uses that, for a radius, it will produce a larger distance here because the cylinder is narrower from the perspective of this point on the left. When it asks about a point on the right, the axis distance field will produce a larger radius value. So when the cylinder uses that to do its calculation, the result is a smaller distance, meaning that it's closer to the point over here than it would be to the point over here. And so the result of that is that the cylinder sticks out more on the right side than it does on the left. Let's switch the axis back to Y. And then we're going to set the center back to zero here. Next, we're going to be looking at wave field. Let's open the palette again and create a wave field operator. And connect that to the height input, which is the second input on the cylinder. 
set the amplitude to something like 0 0.2 and the offset to something like 1. The wave field uses different types of repeating waves to produce values. Adjust the period and the phase to stretch the wave or shift it. Try changing the axis to Y and you'll see some strange behavior, especially if you increase the amplitude here or decrease the offset. And that's because as it's asking about points based on the Y coordinates, it's also using that to change the height, which affects how far away the surface is on the Y axis. So you get some kind of render errors there. So it's important to make sure that what you're doing makes sense spatially. And if you are using an axis to control something that's also along that same axis, you can get some weird results. Now let's go back to the X axis there and increase the offset and decrease the amplitude again. Next, we're going to look at band field, which uses a band of space along one axis that has one value and another value outside that band. Open the palette, create a band field operator, and connect that to the radius input in place of the axis distance field. So when you do that, you'll see an error. Use the middle mouse button on the cylinder SDF that's showing the error indicator. At the bottom, there's a section that shows errors. In this one, it's saying input does not support return type VEC4, or vector. And that means that Cylinder SDF is expecting this first input to be a field that produces just a single value or a float value. But instead, band field is giving it a vector. On the band field, we're going to set the return type here to float. Then we're going to set the axis to Y. For the outside value, which is what it uses outside of that main area, center area, we're going to set that to something like 0 0.4, and we're going to keep the inside value at 1, or you could increase that if you want. You'll notice that in some places along the edge of that band, we're getting some rendering errors here. And that's happening because there is a sudden hard shift from one radius to another. So to address that, you can use this blending setting. And if you increase the blending amount, it will smooth out the transition from outside the band to inside the band. Next, we're going to look at step field. Open the palette and create a step field. Make sure you're using step field and not step function. So we're going to connect this one to the cylinder's height input in place of the wave field. And we can delete those old operators. Step field is similar to band field, but instead of a band with an outside value on both sides, it's just a single transition or a step from one value to another. On the step field, set the first part of the value 1 to something like 0 0.7. And this is what it uses on the left side of the divider. And then, and then for the first part of value 2, which is what it uses on the right side, you can keep that at 1. Similar to band field, it has a blend parameter that allows you to smooth the transition between those. And it has an edge parameter that allows you to change where that value crosses over. So far, the fields that we've been using are float fields, except when band field defaulted to a vector. We're now going to take a look at some ways to use vector fields. Create a translate operator 
and insert that between the cylinder and the renderer. Now what we want is to shift the shape along the X and Z axes in order to produce a kind of spiral effect. Now create a wave field operator set the axis to Y and set the amplitude to 0.1. So as we mentioned earlier, this operator produces just a single float value. And while you can connect a float field to the translate second input, it uses it as a multiplier for what's in the parameter, which is not what we're looking for. So we need to create a vector field. So there are a few different ways to do this, but we're going to use a float to vector operator. So open the palette and create a float to vector. I'm going to connect the first input to the wave field and then connect the output there to the second input on the translate. So currently, this operator is taking the result of the wave field and using it for all three axes. But what we want is to use two separate waves, one for X and one for Z. So create another wave field, or just copy this one, and connect it to the second input on the float vector. Then on the float vector, we're going to keep the X source on input one, for the Y, we don't want anything, so we're going to set that to 0. And then for the Z source, we're going to set that to input 2. And for W, it doesn't really matter since we're not using it, but you can set it to 0 if you want. Then on the wave field, the second wave field, we're going to set the wave type to cosine. Then we're going to attach the parameters of these. so. You can either drag the period parameter or do copy parameter and then on the second one do paste on the same period parameter and paste as a bind and then do the same thing for phase. Now if you adjust the phase it's going to move both of those waves which one of them is a sine wave for the x-axis and the other is a cosine wave for the z-axis. And the cosine and sine are just offsetted from each other along the, the axis, so they end up producing kind of a circular pattern as it moves around. So you get this kind of pattern like that. That's it for this section. In future sections, we'll cover other types of fields and other ways to use them. Stay tuned for the next video in this series. Check out my Patreon for access to Steam files, exclusive tutorials, and more. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe.